Good evening and welcome to Artist Talk on Art. This is Monday, April 4th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm Doug Shear, president of ATOA. Tonight's panel looks at the idea of art and soul, namely mindfulness or light work. The panel was organized and will be moderated by Linda D'Augusta and features artists Agni Zotis, Kristen Reed, and Lisa Travell. This event is being recorded and is copyrighted by Artist Talk on Art with all rights reserved. We will be posting it to our YouTube channel in the next few days. Your questions or comments are invited via the Zoom chat function, which you'll find at the bottom of your screen, your Zoom screen. And Linda will be selecting some of them to read to the panel at her discretion. Donations are always welcome. See the ATUA website, <coughs> atuanyc.org, for how you can make donations. Tonight's moderator, Linda D'Augusta, has spent nearly two decades as primarily an art writer and an artist in New York City. Highlights of her career were co editing the online magazine Resolve 40 and sharing a Huffington Post blog with her late partner artist Mark Wiener, and having her drawings of mainly pairs presented in galleries and museums in New York and internationally, including the 2009 thematic group projects, A Book About Death and Black Madonna. Most recently, in response to what she sees as a turning point in the arts and the world in general, she has returned to her roots and extended her studies of human development, both in creating the content of the Superheroes Way podcast and blog, and to create a life coaching program for artists. She is currently writing a book based on the same themes, titled Art and Soul. Linda will now take over and amplify her own background and introduce her panelists. Linda. Thank you, Doug. Instead of my background, I'm going to kind of amplify what I'm hoping, the reason I wanted to do this panel, what I'm hoping it'll lead to for people. I may be the only artist you know who is writing a self-coaching book for artists, as Doug pointed out, and reads tarot cards, but maybe not. But uh, the answer is, you know, why am I doing this? And uh, before we jump onto that, I would like to say, if you have a pencil and paper, I would like you to take it out right now or get a hold of one and uh, just for dinner, I'm going to give you the type of exercise that's going to be in the book and in the coaching program, which is to write down everything you tell yourself about yourself as you're going through your thoughts during this panel. And then I just lost my notes. And also everything you think about anybody else who's in the panel, who's speaking, whatever thoughts you have, write those down, maybe in another column, and then write down anything you also tell yourself about art in general. And just hold on to that and remind me to tell you what to do with it at the end. Just write, write those things down completely spontaneously on a piece of paper. Don't pay attention to it, just record them when you, when you remember to. Okay. So that was fast, anyway. Yeah. One thing I think that all of us can agree on is that art is something we just pick up at the art supply store and assemble, right? Nah, no, we don't do that. There is a secret ingredient, and that's where the soul part comes in. Tonight, I hope we'll all discover ways to get more and more of that, and we will all want to keep exploring as well. Right now, we're coming out of what has been a devastating pause into a changing world that looks like it needs at least a little help, okay? This is the perfect time to figure out how to hit reset on our lives as artists, because we do have what it takes to be leaders in moving people's hearts and minds. We're artists, we're communicators. It makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, why do that? Why do we want to stop and do that now? Well, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking <coughs> when we created them. Mm -hmm. That's not me, that's Albert Einstein talking. That's what he thought. So if we're going to make a shift, uh, it's kind of like getting in shape physically, you exercise and relax your body. We want to exercise and relax our minds. Now, I used to think practices like Reiki and meditation were, were too hard for me. People had very disciplinarian approaches to things and it never appealed. But now thanks to our panelists and other people, I know better and wow, there it really isn't any other way to get inspired and just really plugged into what gets you going. 
than do, mm -hmm. taking that mindfulness break. Okay. And there are four words to always tell yourself when things get tough. And I'm gonna be a little bit braggy and read an excerpt from my book, Art and Soul, right now, uh, from the chapter that's called How to Be a Cat. Never mind why. So the question is, why does the cat always go to the person in the room that does not like cats? Because instinct tells them being looked at is a signal to submit. And what happens when they don't go to the people that want them? The rest of us, try, all of us drop our voices into sweet little whispers and say, kitty, kitty, come to me, kitty, 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 oh, kitty, 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 kitty. Well, what if you walked into a group show, an art show, and one of the artists was standing near her painting that was turned around so you could not see it? Wouldn't you just have to ask her why? And wouldn't you hope that she would share a peek? Okay, I'm not suggesting that you do this, but in the light of it, how do you think all the look at me behavior we see around us is working? There is a reason we use the expression cool cat for somebody we enjoy being around. So what are the four words that can really make you happy with this? Can you guess? The words are, it's not about me. <laughs> Okay. And since she's laughing, I'm going to introduce now Agni Zotis. I think I've got your name pronounced right. Uh, she's a multimedia artist based in New York City with a lifelong focus on painting, including performance art, video, sound, and light installation. She apprenticed with a Byzantine monk in Agia Markella in Astoria, Queens. Is that that's right? Okay, and a Buddhist monk in Pokhara, Nepal where she learned ancient techniques of painting and symbolism in mysticism, the use of pigments and <coughs> still uses English <coughs> language. Excuse me. She's a certified yoga and meditation instructor, functional nutritionist, and the founder of May Kids Transform Foundation, a wellness curriculum phase focused on meditation, art, and yoga, M-A-Y. So now Agni, are you gonna give us a start off with a little meditation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And on this time zone, it's a bit of a sunset. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, thank you for, for having me on this panel oh, thank you. Um, and sharing it with these wonderful people um, and whoever joins, right? And at this moment, if you're joining in live or you're going to see it, later on let's just um, all of us collectively come within ourselves right because what an example of interconnectivity that we're experiencing um, from all these different parts of the world coming here and meeting on this platform so i invite you to if you want, close your eyes. If not, just have a soft gaze and start noticing the breath and taking a deep breath in through the nose and follow it entering your body and almost imagine it going down to your belly and then exhaling. And again, a deep breath in. I'm really feeling the torso with air, with oxygen, with this life force, and then exhaling. And again, just do a couple of those. And as you're breathing in, just notice the breath and bring the attention to the idea that this is actually life force. Like how fantastic is this just simple breath that keeps us alive? And again, really feeling it within the lungs, within the belly, and perhaps every single molecule, if you could imagine. And for this very moment, invoke a memory, something of that you love dearly, or whatever that is, and just allow the idea to turn into um, an emotion. Um, and feel it, feel it throughout your whole body at this very moment. And let us come 
to play with a deep breath. What are the chances of willing the being to be at this very moment in history, at this very place? So just thank your body, thank your heart, thank your soul for having this human experience. And collectively, just sending our beauty into the world. Let this gratitude for us, for each other, and for those that are going through very hard times. Just sending out a blessing because we are interconnected so intricately and deeply. And everything from the moment it all began, from the Big Bang, was for this very moment of so finding gratitude in that space. Wherever you are, wherever you may be. And just coming back into the shared experience. And yeah, right? Just taking a couple of deep breaths and self-reflection. And let's talk about art and soul. <laughs> So, to me, art is life, like a whole life is a process of the spirit, the soul. So, therefore, they're very much interconnected. Like, if life is art, and it is, right? And why do I say that? Because we're constantly creating. And if it's creating... Um, we are creating, and if it's art or just our lives that are really masterpieces, right? Because if we really tap into that energy of understanding who we really are, right? Like our thoughts create our emotions, right? What we think our emotions and our emotions create our actions, right? So therefore, we're constantly creating our lives, they're the biggest masterpieces. Um, and that's how I see art in everything I do. And it's very much defined by love, what I love. Um, and since I was tiny, I've been very attracted to mysticism. Um, although I don't necessarily think of myself in a space of spirituality, because I just think that we are whatever, you know, we might have like these different ideologies and thoughts, but the reality is we're all having this experience. We're collectively on this earth um, negotiating our cards. Um, yeah. What else can we say? And that space of creation, right? So, um, like Linda said in my bio, I went to Hunter, I studied fine arts, um, and I was, I've always been interested in distorting what seems to be as real. Uh, so I'm very much interested in, in energy and movements of it uh, within time and space and how that is recorded. So my two paths in life have coincided that there have been a meditative process because I've been in, in, in that path, which led me to about 30 years ago and, and 25 years ago, 28 uh, seriously down the path of the yogic tradition. But my background also has very much of philosophy from my Greek roots. And uh, know thyself is probably the best gift that I got from the Greeks, my ancient roots, because I am a Greek from New York. So 
what does that mean, right? And that is a serious exploration that has led me through paths of creation. Um, to me, art, as I said, it's life, but it also gave me a language where I saw something that, because the nature of my mind is quite abstract, um, although not anymore, but it used to be extremely. And to, to see the being kind of recognize it. So it's very much of a self-reflective um, autograph autobiographical in some sense of uh, the search and understanding of the human condition. I'm completely intrigued by the idea that we exist, for example um showing up on this earth and what is our purpose right and i always felt really puzzled with the idea of just consuming um so uh, you know people call it giving back and all this but to me as a functionality of humanity to be um completely involved and feeling and 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 um sharing that right and art is such a pure language of sharing of the self. Um, mm -hmm. that it's always the abyss kind of reflecting back at us too and exploring all these different concepts. So, uh, you know, so lately, because I've been on the boat for the past couple of weeks, I'm staying on a boat temporarily. I've been thinking a lot about the Odyssey, for example, and what that means. Um, the idea of coming home, right? And what is home other than ourselves? Um, and how we come of age and we battle all these like war type things, you know, we could say, right? And then we're trying to get back home and you're almost home and you lose them and then there it is. And I find that in my art process, we're getting lost in the spaces of creating and getting there, right? That language of process. Um, okay. Yeah. So question on this i don't i don't want to tear you off but i know you do a lot of work with children i do you mentioned yourself your own childhood experiences so i'm wondering how what how you feel the connection there when you're working with kids and how important it is to you to work with children on mindfulness practices well, I mean, i got involved with working with kids completely through my own son when he was 3 um, so started with art because I felt like they didn't have enough art in the New York City schools. So I, since he's three years old, and then about 10 years ago, when there were teenagers, it came to my um, attention, uh, the suicide epidemic of the youth. Um, so as a creative, and also as a, uh, as a meditation teacher, and my son um, asked me to get involved with his school in particular and some of the young people that I knew, because I was already familiar. I was doing a lot of art, like I said, with his classes. Um, so that's how that got in, 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 in interjected and really serious. And I created the foundation because that was the, the way to go through. And we ended up with a lot of kids a lot of schools and it kind of went a little global in different places. How that's related to my childhood is that I didn't have these tools. I mean, the language didn't even exist because even 10 years ago, when I'm trying to bring meditation to schools, we couldn't use that language. It was a complete taboo, you know? Now it's completely mainstream, thank yeah, I, God, because it saves yeah. lives, yeah, pardon? I, I could not define what I wanted to do in life for years and years and years because the language and the category didn't exist. What was right, the so the language is different. Evolved. Yeah, in consciousness. But the way I saw it is a lot, I really feel like give people the tools. Like I'm such a believer of that. And let people deal with their, like learn how to deal with basic human mechanics because we all 
like collect either trauma or we don't or we have anxieties or whatever it is you know and we think we're the only ones and it's not the case at all this is the human condition but i, I guess that's why they, they call it new thought. So for me like bringing that idea pardon okay this cat knows how to be a cat okay thank you um i want to go ahead and start kristen's part of the presentation now and we're going to come back to everybody. I hope people want to put questions in the chat. Please do. And we'll pull them out at the end of the conversations. Okay. So now, since I switched my order, Kristen, want to give a wave? Hi. Okay. Hi. This is Kristen Reed. She is a painter and a shamanic Reiki master. And the person I taught me Reiki, actually, that's how I met her, living and working in Brooklyn. After earning an MFA from Pratt in the early 1980s, she made street art, murals, stencils, posters, and billboards on topics, including world peace, gentrification, and the environment. In 2005, when Kristen became a Reiki master, her work as a healer dramatically affected her painting, which took a turn towards abstraction. With a group called Healer to Healer that exchanges healing knowledge with the indigenous Maya and Amazonian populations, she trained a group of Mayan women in Guatemala, certifying them in Reiki. And Okay, so do you want me to start with the question that I wrote since you said you were ready, we're going to answer it, or do you want to just go? Well, why don't you ask me the question afterward? Because you might want to change the question I may have. Right, okay. So it, it says, you said you topics that you uh, made art about early on, world peace, gentrification, and the environment. They're obviously still hot buttons now. So my, my question is, your work was always about making a difference in those ways. Did the shift to Reiki increase its resonance in any way? Um, well, it, it, shifting to Reiki um, made specific topics like that less important. And I started thinking on, of things on a higher frequency level, maybe you could say, where, yeah, all of that is still important. Um, but I'm approaching it in a different way now. Which, Should I share my screen? Sorry? Should I share the screen and get started? Whatever you like, sure. Okay. Let's, let, let's show, show me, don't tell me. That's the first rule of writing, actually. Okay. Um, so, um, as long as I can remember, since I was a little kid, my identity was as an artist. And it was only much later that I discovered that I was a healer. Uh, my father was a painter and went into advertising to raise the family, something I swore I would never do, haha. -ha. Um, I can remember at age four, he set me up in front of an easel and gave me one of his old shirts that was touching the ground. And I, I painted this horse. And that was that kind of established my identity as a as an artist at age four and then um he took my sister and I to the Museum of Modern Art for art classes on Saturdays and uh it was during the time of abstract expressionism and the teacher gave the kids plastic ketchup and mustard bottles and encouraged us to uh squirt them all over the floor paper on the floor and um uh, I remember complaining to my dad that I thought we were going to learn art. And then he would take us up into the museum to show us Pollocks and Rauschenbergs and all the abstract expressionists at the time and kind of changed my concept of what art was. But I didn't really realize at the time how deeply that um, abstract expressionism affected me. So um, when I was 11, he taught me to stretch and prime a canvas with oils. And my first painting, my first oil painting again was of a horse. So um, uh, after I got my MFA and I realized that, uh-oh, I wound up in the advertising field. I had to then self-teach myself how to be a designer so I could make a living. And I got caught up in that rat race for a while. And it was uh, in 2005, a psychic medium told me that I would be healing people with my hands and with the sound of my voice. 
And this was somewhat of a shock to me, but I just signed up for a Reiki class, so I listened to him. And the class was in Sedona, and there was something um, an art director friend of mine talked me into. And um, it was one of those times in my life where it felt like everything was falling apart. I'm sure you've all experienced something like that. And so I just wanted to get out of town, go to Sedona and uh, chill out. So I agreed and I had only a vague notion of what Reiki was and very little interest in it. But the class changed my life, uh, my perspective, my art, my occupation, my innate skepticism. And a year later, I'd become a Reiki master and meditator and slowly started teaching. And my Reiki teacher also opened me up to the world of crystal healing. So concurrently, while I was doing all the Reiki and teaching, I continued my making art. So it was in the fall of 2008, when the economy fell apart, I realized that uh, pursuing a freelance graphic art career was kind of coming to an end. And I went into kind of a deep depression and had a lot of fear over what I'd be doing next. And I decided to just um, set up a Reiki website and get the business going and get a painting studio. When your support system fails, why not lean toward your passion? Jump and the net will appear. So slowly I developed a clientele and a body of artwork concurrently. Now I've been hearing words, the word sacred geometry, and I set out to find that out what that was. So I was reading books, watching YouTube videos, and um, I guess basically the universe follows a geometric plan. And the geometry of creation underpins the cosmos. Further reading in contemporary quantum mechanics collaborate, collaborated the belief system of ancient societies around the world who drew figures such as the flower of life. And quantum physics also helped me understand why remote healing works. And that has a basis in contemporary physics. So another friend introduced me to a group of acupuncturists and Reiki healers that was forming called Healer to Healer. And they had started doing clinics for indigenous people in Guatemala and the Peruvian Amazon. So we were training autonomous Mayan women in acupuncture and Reiki and how to set up clinics for their communities high in the mountains off the beaten tourist trail. Medical attention for this community didn't exist and they were grateful for any help. The women taught us about their ceremonial healing work and their work with healing herbs, midwifery and massage. And it was a great exchange for us to learn their shamanic healing practices and for them to learn modalities akin to their ancient Maya knowledge that had been taken away from them in the conquest. So in the fall of 2010, uh, some of us were invited to a two week gathering of elders from all over the Maya kingdom to visit sacred sites and take part in ceremonies in each of them. And this is a knowledge rarely accessible to non Maya people and I'm so grateful to have participated. Mayan healing is based on the energy of 20 energetic glyphs combined with a number from one to 13 that make up the Maya Zolkin or 260 day short calendar. The day a baby is born has a symbol and a number of significance in the Zolkin. They know from the symbol and number of the day that each baby is born, who they will become so that they can raise them as a priest, a teacher, an artist, a farmer, or whatever their, um, what their, their energy list says. So they gave me the symbol and the number of my birth, which was Belaheb Tihaj, or nine of the obsidian knife. 
And I asked several of the elders for the meaning of this. And they said the same thing in different ways. I'm a creative person and a healer. And they seem to have a reverence for this that I've never felt in our culture. And it was then that I understood my path. Since then, I've been forging my way, using both sides of who I am as a person, artist, healer. It's been a long series of trials and error to integrate these two parts of myself. My art has changed drastically toward the abstract based on essential geometry. And my healing work has changed by incorporating shamanic technique while visualizing geometric pattern. After my experiences in Guatemala and the Peruvian Amazon, my previous story-based art about greed, dystopian culture and Earth's trajectory lost the stories. And I started combining my earlier abstract expressionist roots with meditative color and geometric symbols from the ancient culture into paintings that had a calming effect. Amidst the chaos and strife that we're facing globally today, I especially feel the need to take a moment to regain composure. Lately, I seek stability and balance, serenity and peace with a symmetrical presence in my work. This has led to a series of small paintings that I can hold like a child or a friend. I realized I was creating entities with a loving presence to heal myself and it's working. Go ahead, Tihaj. Thanks. Okay, I was just asked to mute, so now I'm unmuting. I guess I had a different question, but a, a quick question it could be, you, you used the word pre-dystopian. Where are we now? Uh, did I say pre-dystopian? I think you just did, yeah, because I wrote I, it down. Uh, gre corporate greed and dystopian culture. Oh, greed and dystopian, okay. Got it, sorry, I was wondering if you, <laughs> it's still a question. Um, okay. So <laughs> You did get the question. The other question, I think we still have time for a question here, would be, um, I walked in to your studio as a student, not realizing you're an artist and we knew probably 50 people in common. Does that kind of thing happen often? Is there a synchronicity that happens with the energy between art and spirit and these practices? Oh, definitely, definitely. And I think that um, the more you get used to the more you get used to it, the more you start looking for it and you're available to reach out and grab the things that come your way. Uh, it's like, why did I even take Reiki? I never would have taken Reiki. I would have thought that was, you know, I don't know, flaky or something. But a friend of mine dragged me there because she wanted company and she wanted to do it. And I just wanted to get out of town. And I'm the one that's still doing it. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, there you go. I was sitting maybe, what was it, 10 blocks from your house going, I want to, I want to study something. And I found wow. Reiki and then I found you. The whole process took about a half an hour. Yeah. Until I had an appointment. And it was we're, right there. We're, we're still in touch. And how long ago was that? It was a while ago, but you do with these amazing Reiki shares with your students. So uh, we all get, used to get together and until... COVID has happened in the world and hopefully we'll be I know now it's hard to have 12 people in a room breathing on each other without any soon 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 let's send the Reiki out in the world for right. that right right mm -hmm. okay thank you Kristen thank you for inviting me to do this Linda. oh thanks that was amazing okay yeah. Lisa you're on deck you there okay yep, I am okay Lisa Travell give a wave has lifelong roots in the healing and visual arts and has been a meditation instructor for over 20 years in addition to creating art for hotels, hospitals, and airlines, where her goal is to invigorate the senses and enhance these environments. She uses images of her original art interwoven with narration and sounds derived from nature to create an uplifting and transformative journey into meditation, self-awareness, and relaxation. Okay, so the question I, I put forward to you the other day was, was there an aha moment when you realized you had to put this all together? And you told me. I told you uh, that 13 years ago, this is what it really pops up the most is um, 13 years ago, I put a show together in the Hamptons where I was living, which was about the chakras. And um, I had been teaching yoga 
there. And uh, I did, everyone came to my yoga classes mostly for the guided relaxation at the end of the class because I would do a very long guided relaxation and do color visualization and have people tapping into their, um, their chakras and seeing colors and then I'll, I'll gonna, can i stop you for a second can you give us a real quick primer on what a chakra is if people in case people aren't aware of that Ooh, okay um and you're also going to show the video on the chakras i guess on the screen too but uh, um, that would be natalia so natalia um she might be able to play that video it's Okay. Well, the chakras are vortexes. They're not like an actual physical, uh, like like muscle, but they are they are vortexes of energy that you focus on for meditation purposes. I mean, that's my definition of a chakra. They're um, they're meditation guides, and the colors of the chakra go from um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, like the rainbow. So it's really helpful in a relaxation to focus inward and give people like um, a sense of seeing colors in their body that can enhance relaxation. So that meditation can and visualization come close together in my definition. If you just blank out, I, I was never very good at like meditating and totally just oming and not not seeing things. So what I like to do is go into a, a state of relaxation and, and look inside my body and see the energy moving and the colors, the chakras help in doing that. Uh, so I did, I did a, uh, uh, paintings depicting each one of the chakras. And then 12 years ago, I did a Tantra show and if you want me to give you a definition of a Tantra show, it's also open for interpretation. But um, we'll get to that in a moment. I just like the chakras I feel are, I'm still working on that theme right now. It's evolved over the last few years since I moved to California. I've had a lot more time to be in nature. And also I, haven't been working at body work as much here. I had a, a very um, busy uh, schedule when I was in New York teaching massage, yoga, and came out here and almost everybody out here teaches massage and yoga, you know, and they all meditate too. But, um, <laughs> but different versions of knowledge. Yeah, so I'm speaking to the crowd here, but... <laughs> But in a way, the integration of the visual that I've done, and you can see it in the video. Is someone working the video here on the screen? Where did she go? I don't know. Um, Natalia, are you there? Hi, I'm here. When um, I have to share my full screen, so I won't be able to hear anything. So just tell me when to stop the video and go to the next video. How well, awesome right now. Play the, the chakra video, because it's one minute long, and we can have that as I speak. Okay, um, can we make that bigger? Yeah, okay. Uh, so what I've done is these are, um, lots of these are collagraphs. That's a, a lino cut. Yes. This is a collagraph, which is carved into cardboard. This is a big mural. And I put the movie together running the rainbow of the chakras. Yes. So this kind of video now, I am doing in presentations, like I'll give a uh, rejuvenate talk where I'll have people do breathing exercises and shoulder rolls and uh, head rolls and relaxation techniques with their eyes open. Now this is a new place to go with meditation is the combination of visual and inner work because people very often close their eyes when they're meditating. But um, I think it can also be with open eyes. And uh, so I've been exploring that. Um, oh, is this the meditation promo? Oh, I didn't know I sent you that one. Mm, okay, well, that one works too. Um, yeah, this is, this is a good one. Uh, so for the last few years, I, I went to Apple a lot 
and learned iMovie. Then um, I take my paintings, take photographs of the paintings and um, put them into a movie format. And then this one's not moving that much, but it should be moving. Did it glitch a little bit there? It's waving a little. It's waving. Okay. Oh yeah, it is moving. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, it's moving and it has music to it. I also have a version that has the guided relaxation under also playing. So somebody can buy this and play it in their, um, at home. But for presentation purposes, like I said, I guide people through a relaxation and I have the projections on a screen. Um, I'm really excited about the fusion of um, the art and moving pictures. Um, and I'm continuing to explore that. Um, I'm looking, I have some, a whole NFT collection now on the chakras and I'm developing one on the um, Tantra theme too. So I'm going back to these two topics that I started working with about 12 years ago in the Hamptons. And now I am just changing the format, bringing them into video. Uh, I really am excited about having moving pictures that people can watch at home or as home decor to create an environment. Um, and uh, eventually, I think it's gonna go into a headset for virtual reality. I'm looking into how many virtual reality programs actually engage people in meditation. And there don't seem to be too many of them, but um, I feel like that would be great because that then you're looking at it, but you're in your own headset. So that, that kind of excites me, that does excite me as well. Uh, Let's see, what else did I want to bring up? Um, yeah, Tantra to me, as I said, it can be interpreted in different ways. Um, I have a little blurb here, I'll, I'll read some of it. Tantra is a practice of integrating one's energy as a way to attain health and vitality, creativity and love. Tantra teaches tapping into and moving one's energy through this awareness, blocks are released and peace, joy, and fulfillment can be reached. Tantra practice enables you to get in touch with your feminine masculine balance, as well as enhanced communication with partners and nature. Tantra in <laughs> integrates breathing, gestures, mantras, mandalas, movement in a quiet sensory awareness to attain full potential. So I wrote that 12 years ago when I did the first show and I'm coming back to that now because it has more meaning to me now than it did then. Um, and the video that you're seeing now are my paintings in a digital digitalized format. So, um, they're they're moving they're moving art in motion is another word for it and usually i have sounds of nature that go behind the videos uh like birds and ocean crickets i'm exploring different sounds that could be played with the art um, really focusing on integrating meditation and art and my astrologer who I follow, I don't go by astrology so, so much, but she did say that, that my purpose is to integrate the two. And I really feel that at this stage of my life, it's nice to have a purpose. It's important to have a purpose. Like, so um, I'm gonna continue to do this. <laughs> and thank you, Linda, for encouraging me to be on this panel and with all these other wonderful women. Thank you, Lisa. That was really delightful and relaxing. And I wonder, since you're gonna do the closing meditation, do you wanna do that now before we head into uh, summing up in a Q and A? Yeah, sure. Please, thank you.
Okay, so everybody can look at the images that are in front of you right now. And again, quiet your eyes, focus in on your breath. And what I like to do as far as the chakra meditation is to feel red, orange around the belly button, yellow. You might wanna put your hand there as I mentioned the color green, blue, indigo and violet. And what's really nice to do in the morning or any time that you might feel stressed or in the evening before you go to sleep is feel the loop from the red going up your back through all the colors, up through your spine, through your back body, green, blue, through the back of your head. I'm moving my hands across me a little bit like Reiki as I'm doing this across the top of my head, then down the front of the body, through the chest, through the stomach and down into the pubic area and root chakra. And just practicing that loop is so relaxing. You can do it with your eyes closed. You can do it with your eyes open, visualizing colors, taking in like nature from a park or from a river around you and doing the loop. It's super relaxing and it's a way to move energy in your body through breath and visualization. So I encourage you to do the loop up the back of your body, sort of inside the spine, all the way up the vertebrae, in between the vertebrae, up in, in your head and across your face, relaxing your face, really important. Relax your jaw and throat and chest and belly. And come down into the pubic bone, down into the pelvic floor, the root chakra. And then to finish off, Feel the energy moving down your legs and into your feet. And it's also another good reason to get into nature, to feel grounded. So practice that loop with the chakras <laughs> and rejuvenate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. That was a good way to sum up. Let me just get back onto the chat and see if we have any questions too. If, if, if anybody has any questions now, please pop them up into the chat. Um, I think I'm seeing everything and I didn't see any yet. Or are we allowed to do any questions live? Can people unmute and just ask? Why not? Yay. Please. Anybody? Um, you, you might you might mention uh, how how viewers, you know, today tonight, or in the YouTube when they when those who watch it on YouTube, how they can find these uh, three artists or and or you, uh, uh, either by giving their URLs or you know. Actually, we've created for anybody who uses Facebook, first of all, in case anybody wants to follow up, play with this or join in. Uh, I created a Facebook group yesterday called Art and Soul. So hmm. far, it's just those of us who are presenting in it, but that's open to the public and anybody can join it. Um, my, I think my, my email is in all of the promos and stuff, which is the superheroes way at Gmail. Mm -hmm. Should I put that in the chat actually? Mm -hmm. Yes. Put our e emails in the chat. Mm -hmm. Will people see the chat on YouTube? Not really. No. 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 Not. Mm -hmm. uh, I can link it in YouTube if you. Can. But I mean, my my. I think our contact information is in what ATOA put up today at this point on the ATOA website. I am the superheroes way at gmail.com and you can find the superheroes way usually without the apostrophe because the addresses don't take it. It's Instagram. Uh, it's Facebook and something else that I'm not, and, and, and Gmail. Yeah. So 
that's pretty much my handle. Uh, not Twitter, but I don't use Twitter that much. What? Yes, Roberta. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. Roberta. Lower left, it'll pop up, I hope, a little microphone. Yeah. Roberta, no, we're still, I still see your, there you go. You got it. Uh, Lisa, I just went on your website and um, now your videos, that could be just done on the computer. You're talking about just setting it up. Well, yeah, one can watch some of my videos through YouTube. Um, pretty soon I'm going to have them available, um, some longer ones and different ones on my website. Oh, I great. Good. Yeah. And um, I'm really interested in combining like a, a guided relaxation in person at an event, let's say. I think, I think the potential of doing relaxation with the visuals is, is great. But if you want one for your own personal... Uh, no, so I, like, I like it because I've tried meditation before. <laughs> and in two minutes, I'm sound asleep. So I'm not sure what I'm, I'm meditating at all. But I think if I could keep my eyes open, I would be able to really sort of meditate. I, and I, I like the idea of the visualization of your, your colors and stuff. It really, uh, it impressed me very much. So Thank you. you're, in, you're, in New, you're not in New York, you're in California. I am. Well, let me just tell you a little bit about the guided relax. Um, I didn't show you the one today that has a guided relaxation with the visuals, but that will be available um, on my website and you'll be able oh, okay, to great, great. For it and download it. And okay. my website is my name, Lisa Travell Art. Okay. So I, and I, if, I, if I give you my email address on your website, you'll include me, include me in your, uh, your notification. Oh, thanks. Art. Of course. Okay, yeah, thank I, I'm, I'm a New Yorker. I'm living in California now, but I, I love New York and that's where my family lives. So I go back there a lot. Okay. I'm glad you liked it. Thank you. I did very much. Thank you. Thanks. I'm curious to Lisa uh, or anybody else that's familiar with the East Coast. <laughs> are there any galleries that are catering to this whole sort of genre of, uh, for lack of another phrase, new agey art? Oh my gosh. Um, I'm looking for that. I've actually, I've been reaching out to show my videos at galleries. And I think that it's, um, I'm, I'm seeing that there is more interest now for the integration of meditation and art because there's such a need for it right now. And people want to learn to relax more than ever on the East Coast. The West Coast, they've all cut, they don't even, the lifestyle, the people are more relaxed here to begin with, but I really feel that um, I think the time is coming where there, there'll, there'll be some, some gallery uh -huh. action. Uh -huh. sure. Okay, and I know actually one art dealer that I know, Dorian Berg, and I don't know if anybody, probably everybody knows who she is from ACA Gallery, but she I actually don't. wrote a book on palmistry. Oh, wow. Comprehensive book, and she's good. I saw her read somebody I know, and she's great. Dorian Bergen, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and she she actually, the gallery actually represents Faith Ringgold, who's got the show at the Brook Museum right now. So it all comes around in a big circle. I saw a really good show on uh, cosmic geometry. It was called at the Elizabeth Foundation Gallery uh -huh. um, maybe six weeks ago it ended. So what I meant, what Lisa was, you know, there's a gallery in Chelsea. It's been there for ages, probably for 30 years at least, called the Gray Gallery. Are you familiar with that at all, Alex Gray? No. So that, that's that's a, a place that has shown uh, all sorts of people working in what they would call psychedelic styles mm -hmm. or uh, hippie art, which used, you know, when that was a phrase, New Age, um, and it's very much. It's very much that kind of place. And I think there must be around the country uh, at least a half a dozen or so that are operating on that, you know, on that wavelength. Yes, um, out here in California, they're doing projections that are very psychedelic. So all the art is digitalized. Mine comes from actual physical paintings that have been digitalized. So there's, I think, a big, a big difference there. Um, and people can buy the prints as well. 
I'm, I would like to see a gallery that would, could have mapping and projections along with, with uh, framed artwork. Uh -huh. You mean outside of the Pentagon? Yeah. That was a bad joke. Uh, uh, I want to I want to say Doug, that that uh, the gallery that you were mentioning in Chelsea was Feature Inc. that showed uh, Alex Gray. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to say that uh, yes, he was. Hi, hello. Hi. <laughs> so were you? Just wanted to say that and I, Alex Gray moved to the Hudson Valley. He has oh, he like did. a where, where is he? <laughs> yes, I, I don't recall now the town, but uh, I've been in his place and he has like a sanctuary and he's uh -huh. creating a museum mm -hmm. also. Really? It's a, he has a big movement of uh -huh. people going and, and working with him. Right. Oh, wow. That sounds I mean, like we should get in touch with him. <laughs> he's been sort of an outlier in the art world, but that's interesting. I think by for him moving to the Hudson Valley, that's a perfect fit. Yes, it is. And he has a big field and, uh -huh. you know, really, really big. I've been there before COVID, but uh, I was surprised how many people are where they are like younger generation also uh -huh. painting with him. And uh -huh. yes, it's a very interesting place. Where, when you say uh, the Hudson Valley, where where specifically do you know which well, town? No, I don't recall exactly now because I visited. Just Google and you'll find them. Yes, yeah, exactly. Alex Gray. Or, yeah. Yes. yeah, exactly. Just it's Google. very easy. Uh, like Agnes says, uh, you know, just to, to Google him because All it's right. a big enterprise. And he was, he had uh, the idea to create a museum of his work. Mm -hmm. And his wife was also there, and I talked to her, and she told me about it that they they were planning to create a museum. Great. Hmm. It's definitely something to look at. Yeah. Uh, Germantown, New York. It's just that's on the that's on the Dutchess <laughs> County side. Um, North of, I think it's north of Rhinebeck. Columbia, Columbia County. Columbia County. Yeah, thank you, Doug, for <laughs> reminding. <laughs> so it's up in the direction of Hudson. Fantastic. Yes. Well, I'm going to Woodstock this summer, so I'll check it out. Okay, you got to say hello to us. I, I will. I'll look you up. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so I think it's a good moment for me to jump in here and thank. Linda D'Augusta for being our organizer and moderator. Thank you. I, can I just jump in with one thing? If anybody's yes, keeping can. that piece of paper that I told you about, just put it away for now and look at it. Let the, everything sink in that we've been talking about tonight and your own thoughts. Then look at it in another day and see what pops up to you about it. Could you give us those three questions quickly again? Sure. It's, what you, it's what you said about yourself to yourself, what you said about others to yourself, and what you said about art to yourself. Like, oh, okay. I love that painting. Oh, what are they doing? Oh, blah, blah, blah. What, what are the, these little thoughts, these little analytic thoughts that we tend to have running through the background of our lives. Uh, a really, um, a main part of my coaching practice is learning to pay attention to that and realize how they affect you and how to improve on it, actually. Use them to improve your life and your work. Okay. Thank you yeah. for having me. I like those questions. All right. Yeah. So if I may, let me let me thank Linda again and thank her you. panelists, Agni Zotis, Kristen Reed, and Lisa Travell. And additionally, let me thank our volunteers and interns, Mar Maruna Stratton uh, and Natalia Dragnea, who handles you. yes. and YouTube. Abby Herman, who handles all of our archives, <laughs> Emilia Villarreal and uh, Catherine Carrillo who jointly handle web, the website and social media, as well as our programming committee and our board of directors. Mm -hmm. Let me remind you that next week, April 11th, you can join us for a dialogue between Elisa Pritzker and Babs Rheingold. Uh, and thank you all for coming tonight and being with us. Thank yes. you all. Namaste. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much.